All right, welcome back to some more Active Directory content. Now, in the video last week in this series, we set up our Windows 2016 server as a domain controller. And in doing so, we also, it also had us install DNS. So this is actually already set up as a DNS server. So one of the things that I did off camera is I made sure these were both on the same network. And essentially, all that came down to was going into the settings um, for both my server and my client and going into network and changing this to internal network and in advance saying promiscuous mode, allow all. So I have the exact same settings for both of these VMs. Upon doing that, what I needed to do is log into these boxes and set static IP addresses for them. So the way I did that was through the Windows network, and uh, I believe network and sharing. Wherever you go to configure your IP addresses, where you can choose between DHCP or static IP addresses, I configure them with static IP addresses because that's typically how you set up uh, DNS, right? And upon doing that, we had a little firewall issue on the client side on my Windows 10 box. So what I had to do was just go in here and set it as discoverable. It was a setting I had to change. So now I did all that. They are able to ping each other back and forth, communicate amongst one another. Now we can configure our domain. So that is exactly what we're going to, uh, what we're going to do in this video. So if we want to uh, have a, the user account, create a user account on our client machine, this is our client over here, right? Windows 10, right? If we want to have this as a client that's a part of the domain that we have here, we're going to need to add the computer to the domain, add some user accounts, right? So the first thing we want to do is go into tools and active directory users and computers. This is pretty much where we're going to be living in this video. All the stuff that we do, we're going to do in here. So I'll just minimize that, make this a little bit bigger, and I'll zoom in so you guys can see. So now that we're in here, right, this is our network here, our Active Directory domain, um, or forest or whatever you want to call it. So now what we're going to do is we can go in, you know, there's no computers set up here for the, for the domain. So that's one thing that we're going to want to change. So we can actually do that part on the, on the client side. So let's, let's do that first. We get, we're going to add that and then we can add a user afterwards. All right. So back over on our client windows 10 machine here, we can open up the control panel. Now we can do this through command prompt too, but I'm going to show you pretty much the GUI way to do all this stuff in a future video. I'm going to show you how to do everything completely in PowerShell because you can. And especially if you want to get into, you know, security by starting off as a system administrator, it'd be very handy to know the PowerShell way to do things. Even as an attacker, there's a lot of benefits in learning that. So I'll be creating a series of pretty much reproducing all this, but through PowerShell commands. But I, I kind of skipped through that there. After we go to control panel, we want to click system and security and then system. And as you see here, there's a work group information and all that. We'll hit change settings. This is what we'll need to change. So click the change button and it's by default on a work group, just a local work group. We're going to add it as a member of the domain. We could change the computer name if we want. I'll just go ahead and leave it as is. So here's where we put in our domain, our domain. So elevate dot internal. We'll click okay. And now if you typed in the name correctly, what you'll see is this pop up here and it says enter the name and password of an account with permission to join the domain. So basically it's asking for the domain admin credentials that we created on our server machine. So I will supply that administrator and then the password that I created for that account. And upon successful authentication, you'll get this pop-up saying, welcome to the elevate.internal domain. Click OK, and then it just tells you, hey, we're going to need to restart your computer to apply these changes because that's what Windows does every time you make any significant change. you got to restart. Uh, so going back to the server now, you'll notice that under computers, 
this computer is now a member of uh, our domain. We can see all this information here pertaining to it. It even knows um, the version of Windows and all this different stuff. So pretty interesting there. We're going to go ahead next and create a group and a user that we can then log in with and assign it privileges. All right, so here I click on the users folder on the side here, and we can see a number of groups that are pre-populated, pre-created here for us. Uh, domain users will be all the users, uh, all the domain users, right? So our administrator account and then some service accounts here as well. The, the ticketing service and default account. And uh, you also have domain admins, which only we are a member of as the administrator. And while I'm talking here, let me go ahead and fire up the Windows client. So that's going to take a minute anyways. So what I want to do is I want to add a group to this, right? So I am going to just right click, go to new and group, and we'll call this group elevate users. This will be our custom users group here. And we could leave everything else default. So now we have this group here of global scope uh, security group, but we don't have any members yet. But before we can add members, we got to create them. So we're going to create a user account next. So I'll right click new and then user. And of course, like I said before, all this can be done in PowerShell, but I'm showing the GUI way first. It doesn't really matter what we put for the name stuff here. What matters is our user logon name. That's the one we're going to be, as the name implies, logging on with. So I'll call this test user. And if we had multiple domains, we could choose which one, but we don't have to worry about that here. We'll hit next. And then, of course, assign a password for that account. I think I fat fingered it there, so let me just start over. And here, by default, it's user must change password at next login. That would be useful in a practical scenario, but I don't want to have to make another password, so I'll uncheck that, hit next, and then finish. So now this user has been created, but we need to assign it to the group. So what I'm going to do is go to elevate users, members, and hit add, and then I'll type in test user and check names. Yep, it exists, so OK. Apply and OK. Now... If I look here, we'll see member, uh, members here, and test user is a member of the Elevate Users group. Perfect. So now we can go back to the client machine here, and we'll go to log in. Now, instead of logging in to the local um, work group here, we're instead are going to log on to the domain. So we'll say other user. And we see it automatically because it knows because it knows you know we're part of this domain here. It defaults to the elevate internal domain. But if it didn't, we would just preface this by saying elevate backslash and then the name of the user. So test user. Um, and similarly, if we wanted to sign back into the local work group, we would just type ms uh, edge win ten backslash ie user to get into that account. But in this case, it's good that it defaults to the Elevate group because or domain because that's the domain that we need to sign in to anyway. So we're, we can just type test user and then the password that we created for that account. And now you see that uh, it is logging into the test user. And since this is the first time we ever logged in to this account, we're gonna get to we're just basically gonna see the initial Windows stuff here. And it'll take a minute to actually load in, of course. And yeah, once uh, once this is done, I mean that's pretty much it. In um, off camera, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a few different groups and a few different users, and we'll build out a little mini Windows domain here. And in the future video is where we can start getting into some interesting stuff because what I can do is play around with some configurations of these groups, right? and privileges and users and see if I can maybe set up some, you know, misconfigurations that we can discover and dis uh, and uh, ex exploit as an attacker. Kind of like um, a red teamer or a, or a real hacker would do in an internal Windows environment. So really excited uh, for that stuff for sure.
you see here, username, test user. So we are on the test user account. Perfect. So yeah, hopefully this video was of help to you guys. So be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit the like button as well. And if you want to see some of the you know, other videos in this series, maybe if you want to catch up or you're just jumping in on this one, I actually made videos on how I set up the domain controller and all that stuff. So go ahead and check out uh, the videos on screen right now. I'll see you guys right over there. Thanks for watching.